post-traumatic stress, um, complex post-traumatic stress, healing of the nervous system, or at least calming it down, you know, um, by no means do we think that one, you know, top on the mat, or even if we come onto the mat every day, several times a day, healing takes time, but what we can do is offer ourselves some relief through practices, some releasing of the tensions, some um, calming down of those nerve endings that may be jittery or in that constant feeling of flight or fight or flight mode. So we can bring some energy, some calming energy um, to that parasympathetic nervous system, to our organs, our inner organs, to our mind. And all of this is accomplished through yoga, breath work. And so I like to take my time when I'm making my videos and I'm thinking of the yoga poses and I'm thinking um, especially what's most needed at the time in which I'm making it. And so right now we are literally um, globally in the midst of what they're calling a pandemic. Um, this is 2020, so depending on whenever you may watch this video, however long it may last on the airwaves, um, if you're watching it immediately, then you know exactly what I'm talking about in real time. And we're in the midst of, um, more importantly, in addition to the pandemic, which they're calling it the COVID-19 virus, the coronavirus, you know, uh, black people, we call it the Rona, you know, uh, so it, it's, it's a virus that attacks the respiratory system. A lot of people have um, succumbed to that. They have not been able to fight it. They have crossed over. But then there's also a lot of misinformation. But alongside all of that is a mass amount of fear being released constantly, um, having people feel the need to be on alert, to if you suffer with any kind of anxiety, that's why I'm dedicating this to post-traumatic stress disorder, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, trauma sufferers. Um, it really is a very challenging time to be alive, but it's also a great opportunity. It's an opportunity to cultivate some different practices to really come within the self and anchor in self-love, to bring in those things that may bring relief, releasing of the tensions, releasing of the muscles, um, the joints, relaxing of the breath. And so for me, it's yoga. And I'm coming down to um, making kind of the last of the videos to con to continue the next step in my yoga process, in my yoga building. And so I like taking the opportunity to discuss why I am choosing to um, tape certain video practices, why I choose to call them what I call them, um, why I am really focused on mindfulness yoga, restorative yoga, yin yoga, gentle yoga, trauma-based yoga, those things that really help calm the body and the mind simultaneously to allow a person to either deepen their practice, start their practice, continue their practice, feel at ease in their practice. And so yoga is, is an age-old age old art and there are many forms of yoga. Um, but today we're gonna dedicate our time to really practicing um, conscious, mind-based, trauma-releasing um, to, the, to the ability that we can, um, bringing in some of the calming breath for the parasympathetic nervous system, allowing those nerve endings that are constantly in motion to kind of calm down, feel soothed, feel grounded into our practice. So if you haven't taken the time to get your mat yet, you're just joining me in the video to see, hey, what is this video going to be all about? Or what is the purpose? If this sounds like something that you need at the moment, whenever you're joining, please get your mat. Put on yourself. Um, if you like some soothing music, I have water and wind chimes in the background. 
And I'm going to turn it down a little bit because I don't want to feel like I'm screaming into the video. But also allowing that energy of water, the energy of calming to come in, the energy of wind chimes. Bringing in those earth elements, the water element, the um, air element, sound, activating the senses. All those things kind of really, really, really play a role into our everyday moment-to-moment -moment existence. And so if you haven't already, get yourself a pillow. Um, and if you need, you can get yourself a blanket or a towel. And you want to, this time we're going to take our blanket and we're going to put it on our mats. So that we can really come up into a nice, comfortable seated position. And sometimes it helps to put something under our bottom to sit down. It kind of changes the posture, changes the way in which we're sitting. I'm going to slide down just a little bit. Um, helps us kind of elongate up through the spine, take some of the pressure off of the lower back by elevating the hips. If cross leg position is comfortable, feel free to come in a cross leg position. If this is not comfortable, and feel free because I feel that I have speeded up my talking. Um, and we have nowhere to go because this is our time together. This is the time we're taking to ourselves. So no rush, no worries if you're still getting your mat, sitting down, finding your blanket, rolling it up. Take your time. And as you're taking your time, take your breaths. If you've taken your <clears throat> pillow, your blanket, your towel, and place it under your hips, as I was saying, you can modify cross leg pose and come into a straight leg pose if that is more comfortable. Lengthening up through the spine, kind of holding our pipe. We're not holding ourselves tightly, but we're being mindful of our alignment as we get into our seated position. If straight leg is not comfortable and you want to do a different modification, you can always take either leg, bring the sole of the feet into the thigh area of your leg, come into a sit up straight position. And so for me, I'm going to sit cross leg. That's a little more comfortable. And so as we take some time, we're going to check in with our bodies as we get comfortable situating our legs. Be mindful of our spine, be mindful of our heart over our navel, our neck over our heart, and our head over our neck. So kind of bringing that straight alignment to us as we get comfortable on our mats. Take some time, take a couple deep inhalations through the nostrils. Exhale. If you notice, like sometimes when you're getting ready for a practice, you still may feel like anxious, like, okay, we got everything together. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Take some time, relax your shoulders, drop your shoulders back. Just the simple act of drawing the shoulders to the back and drawing them down, creating a nice, so creating a nice softness in the neck area, helps to relax the body, helps to ease the tensions in the neck, if you need to take some time and get yourself a nice beverage, if you have coffee or orange juice or delicious smoothie or wonderful water. And today mine has lemon, no, not lemon, lime. I have lime in my water, so it's extra, extra flavorful. So as you get comfortable on your mat, and you're checking in with your body, I'm going to dedicate this um, time on our mat with an intention. So take some time, think about an intention. Um, and some people may say, well, what's an intention? What, what do you mean by that? Well, what does that really mean? Um, we know that the mind is very powerful. It, it, the mind, you know, as we think, we create. As we create, we are. As we are, we are becoming and being. And so this is a time to come into the present moment. To be present and mindful of what we're going to do with our time and our practice today. Because time is the one thing that at least I don't know quite how to get back. And you can't really pay for it. And so being conscious and mindful and celebrating taking time for ourselves. Especially if you've been in any kind of traumatic situation, you're coming out of a traumatic situation, you may be in a traumatic situation now. 
wearing it well and um, carrying yourself in a way that maybe not allows you to acknowledge it, maybe causes you to push it down. We're not asking you to dredge it up, but what we're asking is to come into just the present moment and just to be happy that right now, this time, we're taking time for ourselves. So we're going to sit with our palms up on our knees. We're going to come into a nice aligned back position, lengthening up through that spine, drawing those shoulders back. And we're going to set our intention. As we gather our intention into our mind, what we're dedicating this time on the mat to, and it can be something as simple as to yourself, celebrating yourself, um, to health, to wealth, to prosperity, you know, any of those big ones, or to just getting to the next moment with ease and grace and breath. So whatever your intention is, bring it into the forefront of your mind. As you bring it into the forefront of your mind, we're going to inhale our arms up to center. And we're going to exhale our arms to prayer pose over the heart, allowing that intention to take itself rooted in our creation, in our creativity, in our divine light to have what we choose on this planet. To first do the harm and to allow ourselves to enjoy our creations. So let's take an inhalation and we're going to really, as we start to um, sit with our arms of prayer pose, we want our elbows to point out. We want to press in through the palms of the hands. And we want to hold that as we lengthen up through the spine gently, dropping our shoulders back, <coughs> taking some inhalations and exhalations. I'm going to have some water. Inhale. Exhale. Needed to take a break, repositioning ourselves, palms at our heart chakra, chest level, elbows pointed out, head over heart, heart over neck. Inhale, press the palms together, elbows pointing out, exhale. Let's do it for three more inhales. Inhale, letting the shoulders relax, exhale. Two more, inhale, exhale, blow it out. Kind of opening up at that chest area, drawing the navel in. Just a gentle chest opener, gentle opening of the shoulders, pressing through those palms, elbows pointed out. Last inhale, exhale, release the arms down to the side. Kind of shake those shoulders out just a little bit. We're gently working with our body today. We're moving in gentle, slow, flowing motion. Pretending almost as if we are a blade of grass or a beautiful flower or a wonderful um, branch, flexible. So, you know, there's a saying that you're only as young as your body is flexible, as your spine is flexible. So that's what we want to create. We want to create flexibleness because if there has been trauma, you know, there's a great book that says the body keeps the score. And as I'm talking, allow my voice to guide you through its sounds, through its information into a gentle swaying motion, keeping the hips square, allowing the upper body to kind of flow and move to a gentle, soft rhythm. Let my voice guide you, and if you feel prompted, you can close your eyes. You can place your palms firmly down on your knees. If you are not comfortable closing your eyes, just soften your gaze, kind of allowing yourself to still see what's going on around you, but in a gentle manner. It's almost as if you are in a daydream and you are safe and you are protected and you are alert 
alertness and to any changes that may cause you to need to be alert. But right now, allow the sound of my voice to allow your body to gently sway, opening up that neck and that head, shoulders, taking deep inhalations. You can go deeper into your swing if you want. You may feel a gentle stretch in your spine. And so as I was saying, if there has been any um, trauma, post-traumatic stress, complex post-traumatic stress over time, and there is a difference, um, the body keeps the score. There's a wonderful book about that. It's called literally, The Body Keeps the Score. And so what happens is when you're in that fight or flight mode, your body always is ready. It's ready to do what it needs to do to protect you and it's never at ease, but if that, Feeling the releasing of the adrenaline um, happens over a prolonged period of time because of things such as anxiety and panic and stress and abuse and fear. And all of those things that we don't really talk about in society, but we just expect people to be able to deal with. We need to find a way to not push that down, but to bring it up in a healthy manner so that it can be released. And so what I've discovered is that everything is energy. And that's really what those deep, buried emotions are, those um, kind of pains in our body. It's just energy that wants to move, whether it wants to be released, whether it wants to be channeled, which is also a form of release. Um, it might want to move from one location to the other, so if we're feeling tightness in our backs, or our hips, it just wants to be activated, the energy that is. So they can gently move and work its way out, or releasing of the toxins, or releasing of the tensions, allowing those deep oxygen. So remember, continue your breath. And as you continue to breathe, know that as you're bringing in oxygen, you are allowing that oxygen to go into places to move the blood flow as we gently continue to sway our bodies. Getting ready to go into wonderful yoga poses that continue to allow us to activate our energy centers so that that energy can be removed, moved, utilized, and is beneficial to us. And that's all stored energy is if it is in a negative form. It just becomes harmful. And we're not doing it to ourselves on purpose, but we just may not know how to release it in a healthy manner. Um, and so I'm here to say yoga, especially gentle yoga, especially if you have dealt with any of those things I've mentioned, um, complex post-traumatic stress, post-traumatic stress disorder, trauma, anxiety, the body then becomes wired to that fight or flight mode. The adrenaline, the adrenal glands are in overtime. It's like they have been working the whole game. They haven't gotten to sit on the bench. They didn't get to relax, anything. And they want to break those nerves that become tight and rigid. You know, sometimes I heard in a yoga, um, and we're really taking some time to be gentle with ourselves today. And so, you know, if you need to pause this video, you know, you can always pause it, go do what you may be doing. Feel free to come back and I'll be right here guiding us through the gentle flow of mo uh, motion, the gentle releasing of energies, the gentle bringing in of energies. And so, they, um, the yoga said that sometimes, the yoga research, that if our bodies are used to being held in a certain way because we may be holding certain tensions in the bodies and so we, we overcompensate with the other sides of our body or the other side of our body, holding it to overcompensate those areas that may hurt us, that may cause us stress. And as I'm talking, we're gonna gently do some neck twirls. So as we're holding this, we think that yoga will help, and sometimes we may think, oh, going deeper into the stretch, really accentuating that, is going to really bring more relief. And sometimes it does more damage because we are, by holding the body in those tight positions, we're stretching those things, or those muscles, those joints, those areas of our body in an exaggerated manner through the X 
extension of yoga, but we might not be stretching those muscles and joints that we need to, that the pose was intended to because the body is overcompensating. You may alter, alternate your rotation of the head. The body is overcompensating and holding itself in that tight, rigid manner. So gentle yoga is really good for that because we are really not trying to force our bodies into any kind of situation. You know, that's what trauma is. It's a force. It's control. It's a stagnation. So let's bring our head gently up to center. Acknowledge that we are doing the opposite for ourselves today. We are holding ourselves as if we are holding a newborn infant, a newborn pet, a newborn idea, a precious gem. That's us. And we're going to hold ourselves. We're going to take our bodies through those motions. And so, as we are consciously allowing ourselves to release the tensions, we're going to draw our shoulders in gentle circles in an exaggerated manner. Drawing the shoulders up in a gentle rotation, so up through the back, to the ears, down through the front. Palms can be flat on the knees or face down at the side. Whatever is comfortable for you. If you need to change your seated position and go out and extend your leg and come into side leg bend, one leg extended, or both leg extensions. Feel free to do that. Remember, you're gonna lengthen up through the spine, so you don't wanna kinda of slouch it down. You wanna still remember to hold the core in gently, lengthening up through the spine, feeling a gentle lift and a gentle chest opener as we sit, not an exaggerated, but in a comfortable manner, almost pretending that we're being pulled up through the top of our heads by an invisible string, which just really opens and allows more energy to come in from divine source. Coming down through the crown, we're gonna anchor our breath down into our abdomen, even though we're holding our core in an upright aligned position, we want to bring in some oxygen. So if you haven't already, reverse your shoulder stretches as you bring the oxygen down into the abdomen with your inhales and releasing the exhales with a gentle reverse shoulder rotation. You can also change where your hands are. They may be face down on your knees now, which may help. For three more reverse rotations. Inhale. Uh, one more. Exhale. Shoulders to center. Release the shoulders. Nice. Now on the next inhale, we're going to inhale our arms up to center, interlacing those fingers, turning the palms towards the sky for a gentle stretch. So let's inhale up, gathering all the love, light, and joy we can. Let's interlace the fingers, turning the palms to the sky, and stretching those arms up, opening up that shoulder area, keeping the neck gentle and soft, having our facial muscles soft, Lengthening up and really stretching through those shoulders and pressing the palms up to the ceiling for three. Exhale. Two. Exhale. One more. Exhale, release the arms gently down to the mat. You should feel a gentle stretch lifting up through the chest and a release. Remember to continue your breath. I'm gonna have some more water. You need to have water. Okay, let's inhale arms up. We're gonna interlace the fingers the opposite way. 
gonna feel a little different when you interlace your fingers the opposite way, taking the palms over the opposite way of crossing each other, turning our palms to the sky, lengthening up through the spine, soft neck, really taking those shoulders back. We wanna kinda of push our arms to the back and lengthen up at the same time, but in a gentle manner. And feel a soft stretch in the arms and the shoulders as those shoulders open up. We want a soft neck. So if you want to see if your neck is soft, you may want to turn it side to side. Go on a yes or no. Stretch for three, two, one. Inhale down, soft arms to the mat. Okay, let's do a gentle swing with our palms flat on the mat. Rocking from left to right, we're really grounding that palm down into the mat, giving our lower back a nice stretch as we lengthen up through the spine. So we don't really want to fall forward. We want to lengthen up through the spine and gently push ourselves to the side bending and stretching at the waist. Nice job. It kind of works this inner area as well. Stretching that, I know that sometimes for me, the back area becomes really tight, that back muscle. And so it feels yummy when I get to stretch it. Okay, nice job. Now we're gonna remove the towel or the blanket that we've had under our bottom. Kind of gonna put it to the side. We'll need it later. I'm gonna remove the pillow. We're gonna come into tabletop position. So as we're in tabletop position, we wanna be hands shoulder width apart, knees hip width apart, creating a nice arch in the back. Taking our time to get ourselves grounded. So we really wanna um, ground in, pressing through those palms. Sometimes clawing the fingers really helps. So kind of clawing down through the fingers. Take some pressure off of those palms. Putting those um, fingertips on the mat. Having the feet flat down on the mat. Knees or hips width apart. Coming into tabletop position for a round of cat-cow. And when you do cat-cow, Cow is a really nice arch in the back which, in which we take an inhalation. And cat is when we round the back up, bringing the shoulders up, dropping the head, and coming into an exhalation while we release the navel, draw it in, right? We're drawing our navel in towards our spine. And so we're gonna go cat, we're gonna take a deep, in, cow, we're gonna take a deep inhalation. Letting that belly hang out. Oh, you may want to shift your hips to the left and the right for a couple times as you hold that belly down. Now you want to exhale, cat. Letting the head drop, drawing the navel up, pressing through, clawing through those palms. Your fingertips, feet are flat on the mat. Come into a nice, gentle rhythm of cat-cow. Regulating your breath, exhale, cat, inhale, cow. Letting the stomach hang, cow, is a delicious, nice stretch for that stomach area. Remember, ground in through those fingertips. You don't want your elbows to fall out to the side. You want to lock in with those elbows, take some of that pressure off those fingertips. Keep the feet flat on the mat. Making sure to check in with your body. Your elbows are straight, your knees are aligned. Last one. Come back up to tabletop. Good job. Drawing your knees in. 
you want to walk your hands out in front of you, shift your weight to the back of your heel and come into child's pose. Draw you the forehead to the mat. Resting on those forearms, allowing the wrist to relax. Take some inhalations and some exhales. If that's not comfortable, draw in your forearms closer to your body, drawing those elbows in, tucking the chin and coming down on your forehead. If you can go deeper in the child pose, you can walk your hands out, lengthening through the arms, taking the forehead to the mat. So remember, whatever modification you need to use, feel free to use it because not every time, every pose will be comfortable depending on where tension is stored in your body. So take two more breaths. One more. Come up to tabletop. Nice, nice job. From tabletop, we're gonna come into thread the, um, we're gonna come into pigeon pose. Pigeon pose is a great hip opener, helps release the tension, helps the body to relax. So on the inhale, we're gonna inhale our right leg up, bend our knee, between our hands, reposition the hands if you need to, walk the knee up, and on the next inhale, you're going to drop that knee to the side, you're going to go down, extend out that left leg, and so as your knee is facing the side of your mat, you're going to extend that back leg out, walk the hands out in front of you, and drop the forehead to the mat. If that's not comfortable, you feel too much of a bend, reposition your leg, come onto your forearms, cross one hand over the other, and place your forehead on your hands. Feet on the extended leg is pointed towards the back. For three, two, one, Inhale, palms out in front of you. Exhale, come up on your arms and your knee. Inhale, right leg out. Come back into tabletop position. While you're coming into tabletop, I'm gonna back my camera up so I can get more of myself in the poses. And so we're gonna do the opposite leg. That's better. So, we're going to inhale our left leg up, bending our knee, taking our feet between our hands, repositioning our palms on the mat. Exhale, dropping the knee to the mat, bringing the foot out to the mat to the side, extending that back leg as we gently lower ourselves down into pigeon pose, foot flat on the floor. Coming onto the forearms, crossing one hand over the other if this is our modified pose. If not, extending the hands out flat, dropping the forehead to the mat, squaring those hips. For three, two, One. Now let's inhale up on our palms, lifting our body up, bringing our, bending our knee from our extended leg and bringing our other leg from under us, coming back into tabletop position. Nice job. And if you need to extend that leg out, have one knee bent round through the palms and extend then come up on the toes, extend your leg out, and give that knee and leg a nice stretch by rocking back and forth as we root and claw through the fingers. 
pivoting on the toes of the extended leg, back and forth. Inhale, knee bend, come back into tabletop. Let's give that other leg a nice stretch. So let's inhale, left leg back, curling the toes. Right leg, knee is bent, hips width apart, drawing out through the fingertips. Start a gentle, oh, inhale, exhale as we let the body flow backwards and forwards, pivoting on that left toe, clawing through those fingers to take some pressure off of our wrists, really dropping the shoulders back, keeping the gaze soft, soft neck, just kind of stretching out that hip, back, lower back, and thigh. Next inhale, bring the knee to center. Exhale, back to child's pose. Take some time, catch your breath. One more inhalation. Exhale. Inhale up to tabletop, pressing through the palms. Come into downward dog. So inhale up, downward dog, pressing those heels into the mat, or at least try to. Grounding, calming, grounding through the palms, dropping the head. Taking some nice inhalations in downward dog. Inhale down into tabletop. Exhale, child's pose. Good job. Inhale up. Exhale, release. Inhale, downward dog, coming up on the toes. Going into downward dog. Now we're gonna walk the feet, still stretching out those legs in a gentle motion, allowing the forehead to drop to the, towards the mat. Soft neck, locking in through those elbows and grounding the palms in. Couple more, walk it comfortably till you feel a loosening. Trying to get those heels to touch the mat. Two more. Inhale, lower down the tabletop. Exhale, release child's pose. Inhale up to tabletop, come down into chaturanga, stretching those feet out behind you, coming down from your forehead on the mat. Exhale, release. Inhale up, baby cobra, giving that gentle arch to your back. Uh, really pressing down through the pelvis into the mat. Exhale, forehead to mat. Turn your head to one side. Let me come back so you can see me. Turn your head to the left or the right for gentle relaxation. Okay, inhale up, baby cobra. Holding the palms flat on the mat, on the forearms. Gentle stretch as we look up and really think about baby cobra. How our feet are flat behind us, tops of the feet on the floor. We're creating a gentle arch in the back. So we're really, we're not this much, unless you want to go deeper into the pose. But just a gentle arch. Dropping the forehead on the exhale. Crossing one hand over the other, putting the forehead on the hand. Taking a deep breath. Release. One more. Release. Inhale up on the arms. Come into downward dog. If you need to walk your knees, you can. Inhale, downward dog. Exhale. Step the legs forward. 
Inhale, left leg forward. Exhale, come up to flat back. Exhale, fall back down for a deeper stretch, a deeper bend. If you want to take this time now, take your hands and grab the backs of your ankles. Pretending that you're lowering that forehead to the mat. Now let's inhale, arms up. Gentle upward. Stand, exhale, release the arms. Nice job. That's how we're doing on timing. Okay, we're doing great with timing. All right, let's go through, that was a gentle introduction to going into um, sun sal. But before we start our sun salutations, I'm going to adjust my camera one more time. get a better angle yes better i was a little too close but i want you to be able to see the exaggerated poses and i'm still learning this on camera business so thank you for taking the time with me hopefully you can see my head is not cut off okay perfect but i think it is so let me adjust one more time this will give you a better picture. Oh, so much better. Hello. Okay, y'all, sometimes you have to regroup and come back and get your, get your groove back, get your rhythm back. So now that we've kind of woken up our body and we feel a nice, kind of gentle releasing and opening up, let's um, start doing, take our feet. I'm going to go hips width apart. We're going to really ground down through the bottoms of our feet. So making sure our feet are flat on the mat, our soles are flat on the mat. We're going to do a gentle twisting at the waist. Letting our arms almost feel like they're propellers or a windmill. And I heard someone call this knocking on heaven's door. And I haven't seen it personally in the yoga manual, so I guess I'll look it up after this. But if that's what this pose is truly called, I love it. And if not, we're going to call it that for right now. So knocking on heaven's door, we're going to allow our bodies to go into a gentle twisting motion, um, really holding our core, holding our spine, lengthening up straight, so kind of not slouched over like this. We're really lengthening up, grounding out through the soles of the feet, having control of our core as we Pivot and sway in a gentle motion from side to side. And you can, as you continue to do this, pick up the pace, allowing those arms to just kind of relax as they sway. You're not really um, twisting yourself with your arms. The arms kind of just go into the motion of the twisting at the hips. You might have a gentle bend in the knee if you need to, um, tucking that tailbone may feel better if you feel comfortable and safe and allowing yourself to close your eyes and really pay attention to your inhales and your exhales as you draw out the navel and the inhale and draw in the navel through the exhale please feel free to close your eyes if not soften your gaze Allow the momentum to carry your body. You may even feel a gentle opening in your chest area as you are gently picking up the pace of the knocking on the heaven's door. Allowing your neck, your upper body to kind of follow the flow of the motion. Enjoying the deliciousness of the lower back stretch, the gentle twist of the spine, and the releasing and the opening of the chest area. Um, sometimes in the experience of suffering through trauma, growing through trauma, warrioring or warrioressing through trauma and healing, trauma is where I continue to sway as you listen um, as I guide you with my voice. Trauma can be stored in those places of the lungs, and I'm, I'm going to stop swaying so I can show you, in the chest area, um, 
in the bronchial area, deep sadness in the lungs, in the heart, the liver, anger, um, the spleen, the pancreas, the kidneys, all of those inner organs that we don't tend to really uh, pay attention to until they start either not being at ease, malfunctioning, or just all out screaming for us to give them their, for us to give them attention. It's because we've stored that trauma, we pushed it down that grief. It, it, it's attached itself to the to the membranes, to the cells, to the core, just to the energetic centers of our body. And so something just as simple as knocking on heaven's door, which is just a twisting motion or a propeller motion or a wind chime, wind flowing motion allows that oxygen when we take our inhalations to go down into those places within our energy centers within our organs and to let them know that they're loved and they're appreciated and we can work it out you know we can work it out we can work it out of ourselves and we don't have to pound ourselves into the ground to do it we can do it through gentle motions through gentle bending and swaying and twisting and turning, through a rewiring of our nervous system, through a changing of our DNA energetic source, um, sources, our cells. And so as you continue to sway, begin to slow down your twist, pretending as if you are moving into a to soften, the twist to shorten. And when you get to the place where you're almost about to stop, be mindful of your inhalation and exhale, bringing the body to a mountain pose. We're going to inhale and exhale. And so a lot of things with trauma, balance helps. When we balance, we shift our thinking processes. We allow our bodies to slow down, to refocus. And so we're going to bring in tree pose because we were just propelling our body, giving ourselves a nice gentle flow and sway. So let's bring in the balance that tree pose gives us. And I love trees because they give us oxygen and they take our carbon dioxide and they, you know, we work together in tandem with each other. So to come into tree pose, you want to inhale your right knee up. And the whole thing is you want to balance. So you really want to take this time to spread the left toes, to ground out through your toes, taking your knee up as much as you can balance, bringing the knee out and positioning on the shin, the thigh or the ankle wherever you're steady higher doesn't mean better so you can go to the ankle you can even have the toes tips of the toes on the mat bringing that knee out point it to the side wherever you're comfortable in your tree pose that's where you start to build you want to inhale your arms up Exhale the prayer pose and hold it steady. You can come in the tree pose with your eyes open or your eyes closed, pressing those elbows out. If you'd like to enhance the pose, you can take your arms up as if they are branches, opening them up to really challenge yourself. You can close your eyes and bring your leg up further on your thigh. Exhale, release. So wherever you're comfortable in your tree, whatever kind of tree you want to be in this moment, you feel free. So now we want to inhale, left leg up, bending at the knee, getting our balance for our right leg, spreading those toes, opening and positioning the leg. Inhale our arms up to center. Exhale down in the prayer. 
stay here if we're comfortable. If we want to extend ourselves or we need to reposition ourselves, we can come down on the tips of our toe. Taking our arms up as branches with our eyes open or eyes closed for three, two, one, exhale, release. And you may notice that you have more balance on one side of your body than the other. Um, it just depends. And it may change from day to day as you're doing your yoga practice. So now that we've brought in balance, let's bring in some sun salutations. Getting ready to heat our body up one good time. So that we can truly enjoy our delicious, delicious cool down. So let's come up to the top of our mat. Getting ready to do our sun salutations. Inhale our arms up. Exhale to prayer. And we're going to do five, no, six rounds of sun sounds. So three on each leg. Inhale up. Arching our back gently. Exhale down. Palms at the center. Inhale, right leg back. And gentle. You don't want to either even jump your leg back. You want to come in a gentle. So you can even come down on your knee for forward lunge. Soft gaze to the front. Exhale. If you want to take this time to just kind of even come back onto your heel and stretch your leg out because we're doing gentle yoga. Take the time and some salutation to give your body a nice stretch. So let's inhale up on our palms. Exhale, left leg back. Coming into plank pose or tabletop, whatever's comfortable. If you're in plank, let's hold it for a minute as we build up that upper body strength, opening up those shoulders. Oh, let's shout around the knees, toes to the mat, heart to the mat, forehead to the mat. Inhale, baby cobra. Nice. Exhale, downward dog. You can go on your knees and come up. Or go straight into downward dog. Exhale, forehead to mat. <sighs> Inhale, step the right leg forward. If it doesn't come all the way up to your hands, then you come to meet your leg. Exhale, left leg forward, positioning the palms. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, release. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Exhale, prayer pose. Nice. Alternate our leg. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, left leg back. Once again, you can come in a forward lunge. Or you can come down on your knee. Exhale, right leg back. Come in the plank. If you need to modify, you're on your knees. Chaturanga. Baby Cobra. You take your time. If I'm going too fast, you slow yourself down. If I'm going too slow, speed yourself up. Inhale, downward dog. Bringing those knees, bringing those feet in so we're trying to go down on those heels for a good stretch in the hamstrings. Dropping the head. Inhale, left leg up. Once again, if it doesn't meet, you come back to meet your leg. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Palms to the mat. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, release. Nice job. All right, four more. Two on each side. Go at your pace, no back. If you need to slow down and modify, you can. If you need to speed up, you can do your two to my one. Great two, you give yourself your um, degree of rigor that you feel comfortable with. Keeping in mind that this is a gentle yoga session. So let's inhale up, palms to center. Inhale, arch your back. Exhale, release. Inhale, right leg back. Forward lunge. 
Exhale, left leg back, come in the plank. Chaturanga, baby cobra. Inhale, downward dog. Inhale, right leg forward. And exhale, left leg forward. Inhale, flat back. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, palms. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arch your back. Forward fold. Inhale, left leg back, forward lunge. Exhale, right leg back. Inhale, come to the plank, hold it. Exhale, chaturanga, forehead to the mat. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, downward dog, nice job. Inhale, left leg forward. Come back to meet your feet if you need to. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, prayer pose. Last round. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arch back. Release. Inhale, right leg back, forward lunge. Exhale, left leg back, and then a plank. Hold it. Chaturanga. Forehead to the mat. Baby cobra. Inhale, downward dog. Walking those feet up to put those heels on the mat. Inhale, right leg forward. Inhale, left leg forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, release. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, prayer pose. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, release. Inhale, left leg back. Forward lunge. Exhale, right leg back. Come in the plank. Inhale down, Chaturanga. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, left leg up. Good job. Last one. Exhale, right leg forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, release. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, prayer pose. Just want to check our time. Oh, we're doing great. Doing great. You're doing great. Whew, okay. So now let's come down into a seated position. Opening our legs wide on our mat. And as we go into the last part of our session, getting ready for our wind down in our Shavasana, we're gonna do a couple deep stretches, but hold on as I turn and change the music. While you're sitting there, allow your body to shift, opening up that thigh area, just with a gentle stretching. And let's bring in all the elements. So let's listen to some Koshi wind chimes. See what they sound like. <coughs> bring your mindfulness back, celebrating that you have gone 60 minutes into your practice. And we're going to go 30 more. So really celebrating ourselves. That was my neighbor. I smile at my neighbors when they walk by. So if you see me turn my head abruptly, it's because one, I'm alert, so I'm paying attention. Um, and two, I enjoy smiling at my neighbors, you know, especially during this time. 
when, when we're all in the house pretty much um it, it's nice to uh smile or acknowledge and be thankful you know for the people that live around us even those people that make great on our nerves you know i've lived some places where i might not have smiled at my neighbors but looking back in hindsight especially in 2020 what they say hindsight is 2020 thankful for all experiences and i have yoga to help thank help me with that and so i'm thankful for my yoga practice um excuse me to be able to see and appreciate the bitter and the sweet to cultivate an extensive palette both literally and figuratively and so I'm loving these Koshi wind chimes. So take this moment to reposition yourself. If you need to get your blanket um, to sit on, you can also elevate your seat. So put it under your hips. If you want to sit flat on your bottom prostate, just remove the hips from under your sit bones. So you kind of just lean over to one side, remove the fleshy parts. I heard someone say that a yoga teacher wrote the fleshy parts. Um, under your sit bone allows you to kind of elevate your stand, stretching that inner thigh muscle, hamstring, coming into alignment with our navel, drawing our navel in, aligning with our spine. I want to turn down the coach one time. I just want you to hear them real quick. Um, and allowing ourselves to be in an aligned position. And so we're going to come in a wide leg, wide leg seated, seating position on our mats. And we are going to do a gentle forward fold, which will allow our lower back kind of to stretch, it'll allow our shoulders to open up. It'll open up that inner thigh muscle, stretching in those hamstrings, grounding out through the soles of the feet, which our feet are pointed up, our toes are pointed up to the side, but the soles of our feet are flat on our mat. We're grounding through those soles. And so we wanna inhale our arms up, and we want to exhale gently forward fold. Now for some, this may be your forward fold. This is it. You, you feel the stretch. You're comfortable. You're not hurting. This is where you stop. Um, if you want to go deeper in your pose, you can gently walk your arms out, shifting that hip area towards the front, keeping our back soft, keeping that neck soft, coming out as far as comfortable for you. If you need to come down on your forearms, that gives you a deeper stretch, come down on your forearms. If you need to bring in your pillow and your blanket, it's kind of a bolster. And when you come down, it gives you more of an upper elevated and you can place your head down. You can feel free to modify the pose with that as well. So for me, I'm gonna come down on my palms, I'm gonna root through my palms, stretching as far as I can go, allowing my chin to tuck and allowing my forehead to drop, taking my shoulders in a nice soft release. Let's inhale. Exhale, remember to tuck the chin to allow your head to fall in a gentle motion. You're not holding your neck tight. Inhale, exhale. And the next inhale and exhale, we're going to release. Inhale, exhale back to center. Nice job. All right, so now let's inhale. Placing our arm, left arm next to the left knee, palms flat. Inhale, our right arm up. Twisting at the waist. Bending over, taking the right arm, either grabbing the left toe or the left foot, coming down onto that left forearm. Dropping the head, gentle side stretch. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, up, twisting at the waist. Exhale, release the right arm. Let's do that to the other side. So we're going to inhale, planting our palm next to our right knee. Exhale, inhale our left arm up. Twisting at the waist, 
extending over the right knee, coming down on that forearm, dropping our head for a side stretch, tucking the chin. Inhale, our left arm up. Exhale, twist it to waist, release. Nice job, nice job. That was my daughter's arm that just made an appearance. But she did a great job trying to be quiet. Okay, let's inhale and gently pull our legs together at the knees, giving our legs a gentle shake releasing the tension in that knee area. You may want to take your hands and give your knees a gentle massage. Oh, nice. All right. So we're going to reposition our hips. You may need to, once again, remove the flesh from your sit bones. On the next inhale, you're going to draw your legs in. So inhale, bend at the knee, place the soles of the feet together. And we're going to come into butterfly pose. And we're going to hold our knees. The goal is to have our knees drop to the mat. If that is not comfortable or if this is too comfortable, you, uncomfortable, you can always extend your legs out, giving yourself more of a spacing, removing the flesh from under your sit bones and allowing just a gentle stretch. You don't really have to pull yourself into, as a matter of fact, don't pull yourself to where it hurts in an uncomfortable position. And so if you need to come out with more space, come out. You can grab the soles of your feet. You can grab the tips of your toes. If you need to come in, you're more comfortable here. You can bring it in as far as you can come, letting your knees drop to the mat. So let's align our spine, lengthen up through the spine, removing that fleshy part from our sit bones if we need readjusting. Taking our fingers and grabbing onto our big toes. Let's sit up, opening our chest, taking some nice deep inhalations and exhales. Inhale, opening up that chest, opening up that, holding up our necks, our head. Exhale. Allowing our legs to fall deeper towards the ground if we can on our inhalations and exhalations. Let's do two more. Exhale. One more. Exhale. Release. Take your hands and help your legs go out, bringing the knees close together, extending our legs forward. Nice job. Now we're going to do a gentle side twist. So turn towards the side of our mat. If you need to take a water break, feel free. Want to inhale our left knee, our right knee up. Crossing it over our left knee. Exhale. Inhale, our right arm up. Exhale, release it behind us, lengthening up through the spine. Inhale, drawing that left knee. It's a different pose. We're going to draw that left knee into a bend behind the opposite side, going towards our bottom, placing the palm behind us. We're in kind of a pretzel position. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, grab that knee, gently turn to look over our right shoulder. Lengthening up through the spine, trying to keep both of our hips on the mat. Couple deep breaths. One more. Exhale, release. Nice job. Always nice to introduce a new pose. We're going to do the opposite side. So let's inhale our left knee up over our right knee. Nice. Exhale. Inhale, bend the right knee. 
Take that foot towards the back. Help it if you need to. Come into seated position. Keep both hips on the mat. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, left arm behind us. Sitting up straight. Inhale, right arm up. Reach towards the sky. Right exhale, wrap it around. Grab that left knee. Twist gently to take our gaze over our left shoulder. Oh, our inner organs are so happy. We're going to remember to ground in through that left foot on the mat, keeping that right foot bent, pressing down as we sit up straight, keeping our hips on the mat, allowing our inner organs and our chest to open and get just a nice little contra energy stimulating pose for three, two, one, inhale, exhale, release, come back to center. Good job, good job. Let me check our timing, see where we are. Okay, so now we're going to get ready. Come into Shavasana. If you need to take a quick restroom break, Feel free to take a quick restroom break because I'm going to take one right now. While I'm taking a restroom break, the camera will still be rolling because I don't want to lose this footage. So I'll be right back. Thank you for this commercial break. Welcome back. Let's come into seated position. I hope you take the hope you took this time to get your pillows, your blanket, if you need a bolster. Um, because we're getting ready to go into the last part of our practice, which I always say this is the delicious part, you know. This is the part that <clears throat> I really enjoy. Because what I really enjoy about yoga, especially when we're focusing on those things um, such as trauma-based yoga or yin yoga or mindfulness yoga or um, gentle yoga, bringing in those calming energies, that time to just kind of let the body relax after it's created a safe, energetic space does so much to repair those energy centers within us that may not be at ease, those places in us that cause dis-ease, that may be out of balance, out of flow. So just allowing um, that relief temporarily, and not that it's some magic potion, and it's gonna be, oh, we do a yoga session, and bam, everything's healed, and we're, you know, vital and at, at a million percent. <coughs> no, but that over time, if we show up for ourselves, doing the best we can with what we have, modifying as we need to, bring in a gentle care for the self, that is love. And no love put in the self is ever wasted. And so it will manifest in different ways. And yoga has many, many benefits that far surpass just physical flexibility, physical endurance, um, physical motion. There's so much more benefit that comes with it. And so Shavasana is just a great time to really quiet the mind, um, 
feel gently guided by whomever you're watching, their voice to lead you into a state of further relaxation. So as you are getting comfortable on your mat and you brought in either your pillow, and I love my squishy pillow because when I put it under my head, it, it's adjustable and it, you know, it's kind of like those neck pillows that you take on the plane. Um, so I enjoy that. And if you need to have a bolster and put it under your hips as you lay down, if you have an arch or a dip in your back, that'll help. Or you may even want to put it under your, if you're going to lay down, oh, a bolster under the knees and the legs. Yummy, delicious. Letting those feet fall out to the side. And so let's take this time to reaffirm our intention in which we started this practice with and whatever your intention was bringing it back into the forefront of your mind acknowledging yourself for showing up today for yourself celebrating yourself in all manners celebrating those blessings that are in your life even if it's just one or two you know gratitude I always wonder why you know to say gratitude and being grateful and appreciative. Those are just high energy words. They are high energy places to be. So if you can just find something simple to be grateful about, maybe it's the fact that you just even have a mat. You got a new mat. Um, maybe it's you have a plant and you've been wanting a plant for so long and your plant is thriving and growing. Maybe it's something huge, big news. Um, you know, just whatever it is. Being grateful for that. Being grateful for the energy of choice. Being grateful for mindfulness. Being grateful for gentleness and holding ourselves gentle in a world where everything tells us the opposite. You know, grind, hustle, don't be gentle, the strongest survive. You know, and those things have their place and motivational stances in the right um, circumstance. But right now, we're just working on gentleness. So we're just taking some time to carve out some space for ourselves. And so let's get into our Shavasana as we bring our intention to the forefront of our mind. Taking some deep inhalations, getting ready to lay back in um, laying down position. And so coming in, if you have a bolster for your legs, taking time to position it under your legs, lowering yourself down, Onto your forearms, getting ready for delicious Shavasana. You may want to take a pillow, put it under your head, really support your neck, um, your back, letting those feet fall out, letting your legs be a bit open, letting the arms fall out to the side, almost as if you're in corpse pose. You know, in yoga, there's a, you know, there's a saying, you inaction is action or action through inaction and so sometimes for some people course pose is one of the hardest poses just because it really is the art of doing nothing and so come into a shavasana if you feel comfortable close your eyes let my voice guide you remind you of the strong person that you are if you need to have your eyes open to soften your gaze, knowing that you are alert, you are well cared for, and you have the ability to act in an instant if needed. So regulate your breath, slowly taking your oxygen, Gently release it. Blow it out through the mouth. Let's inhale through the nose. Taking the oxygen all the way into our abdomen as it's blowing up a balloon. Let's exhale out of our mouth as it's blowing out a candle. If your eyes are closed, you may see colors. You may see a color. You may see images. 
you may see nothing. Whatever it is, just focus your mind, releasing the thoughts. If you'd like, you can take your hands and place them on your abdomen as you focus on your breath. Taking the oxygen in, you feel your abdomen rise, sending oxygen all the way down the abdomen. And exhaling it out. Really drawing the navel into the chest. So whatever's comfortable for you, allow yourself to go deeper into the relaxation. Allow yourself to know that you are guided, you are worthy, and you are divine.
Turning your body, pressing your palm down, uh, letting your head either lay into your arm if you want. Come on to your arm, pressing your palms. Just gently waking the body up if you need to remove your bolster, stretch your legs out. Mm. When you are ready, pressing up the palms of your hands. Come up into seated position, either extending the legs out, uh, coming a half cross leg, or crossing both legs, one over the other. Opening up your eyes. I always love Shavasana, so I tend to come up in the seated and I still have my eyes closed a little, so I brought in all that good energy and it just feels yummy. Um, I don't know about you, but I had almost fallen asleep. That's why I had to get up and um, check the time. You know, because being mindful of the time matters. But if you happen to fall asleep into Shavasana, it is a wonderful, uh, a, however many minutes you get. You know, whether it's three minutes, five minutes, 11 minutes. If you allow yourself a wonderful 30 minutes of Shavasana, Whatever you need, if you are still comfortable and you don't want to get up right now, continue to lay in Shavasana. Continue to allow the sound of my voice to know, to allow you to know that you are worthy, you are divine, and whatever you choose for your practice, because it's your practice. If you are in seated position and you have some more things to do and you're just watching this video, it's got you nice and relaxed. Take that relaxation energy into your next moments, into your next um, responsibilities, duties, activities, things you're going to be doing. Allow that to be your armor. Allow that to cover you. And so as we become more and more grateful for showing up on our mat today, for thanking ourselves, I am always like to touch my mat because it's like I'm home. Um, let's inhale our arms up to the sky. Taking just a nice, slow inhale. Nice, exhale, palm to center. Reminding ourselves of our intention. Reminding ourselves of why we first got on our mat for why you first cut on this video and chose to stick with me through a 90 minute yoga session. You're wonderful, you're awesome, you're worthy, and you're divine. And I say thank you. I say thank you for that. I thank you for watching each and every moment. I thank you for celebrating yourself. I thank you for helping me cultivate an energy of gentleness kindness, self-love, first doing no harm, and divinity. So whenever you may find this video, wherever you may find it, may it have exponential blessings in every area of your life. And I say to you, namaste. And may every area of your blessings Fill every cup of your life. Thank you. Namaste.